right guys, today Justin and I are here at Cis Montaigne Brewery in Rancho Santa Margarita, California. This is their last few days right here in Rancho. I want to see what all their beers are about and see where they're moving. So let's go inside and let's have some beer. Let's have some beer. All right guys, so before we continue on, a little history lesson about Cis Montaigne Brewing. The reason why it's called Cis Montaigne Brewing, anyone, anyone know? Do you know? How about you? Do you know? No? Okay, so Cis Montaigne Brewing, the reason why it's called that is back in the 1600s and 1700s, way, way, way back then, this was the, the name of this region over here, Cis Montaigne, also known as this side of the mountain. So we're talking about the area of what was then Mexico, between like Los Santa Barbara to San Diego to uh, Tijuana area. And that's where they got their name. It was started by two guys, Ross Stewart and Evan Weinberg here in Rancho Santa Margarita. And we just found out their last day was supposed to be yesterday. So we got kind of lucky getting in here. So come and check out the new place, which is gonna be Laguna Beach Brewing Company when they open here, probably when they remodel and we'll be sure to give you a video of that when they open. But we're also gonna check out Cis Montaigne at their new location, their new tap room, which has been open two years, so newish, in Santa Ana. All right guys, so the first up on the roster is the Cis Montaigne Cerveza. It's a Vienna lager. It weighs in at 4.6%. It's a light beer, so it's a good way to start the day. Let's see how it goes. It's got a nice amber color to it. So let's see how it tastes. Mmm. Mmm. It's light, it's smooth, it's biscuity. It's got that nice toffee flavor to it. It's easy to drink. This would be a good party beer if you're sitting back and you want to be able to drink a few beers with your friends and not get too twisted. <laughs> this beer is clean. It's, it's refreshing, but at the same time, it's still got a really bold flavor to it. Nothing's overpowering. You can tell it's a lighter beer. This is kind of like your guilt-free, delicious Vienna lager. I mean, this is, this is great. Cheers. All right, guys, so my first beer here at Cis Montaigne is the Oxalis. It's their sour with a lemon, sour blonde with lemon. It comes in at 4.5% and obviously I drew the short end of the straw when it comes to sours. Jeff's not the big sour fan. I'm, I, I tend to like them, but lemon, I love lemon. So let's see how this compares. Good, clean, clear, nice white head. Let's see how it goes. Cheers. Okay, so it's a really, really good sour. You can really taste that lemon, a little pucker. It's not overly tart where I feel like my cheeks are about to hurt me, but you can feel that tartness on it. But it's also a blonde, so you're getting those nice light flavors, a good amount of body, decent clean finish. It's very, very good. If you're a fan of sours or if you're a fan of blondes, this is one of those ones that will try to get you out of your comfort zone and maybe try to find something else that you might like that kind of crosses over, and this will help do it. It's not bad, not bad at all. So the next on my list is called the Dr. Oot 2.0. Now, this beer actually has a really fun story. One of the people that work for Cis Montaigne likes to play guitar on the side. He's actually a part of a band. And one time, while he was touring on his guitar case, somebody labeled his name as Dr. Oot. It's supposed to be D dot root, but somebody misplaced the period sign. It became a big inside joke, so when they brewed this beer, they thought of him. This is the second iteration of it. It's a pale ale, and it weighs in at 5.3%. So let's try it out. Cheers to you, Dr. Oot. This is actually an extremely light pale ale. I'm actually getting the malts on the top and the body itself is really clean and light. 
This is actually a really refreshing pale ale. It's mostly malts and it's right there on the surface. Uh, really clean finish though, really beautiful beer. I would say this is a great homage to a good friend. So the next one up is the Pillsbilly, the 5.2% Pilsner. Obviously you're looking that great light Pilsner flavor and it looks like a Pilsner to me. Good, clean, clear fun. Cheers. Okay, it's it's a classic Pilsner. It's it's light, it's low, it has a decent amount of body, but not overly so. And the thing is, you're getting not a lot of floral flavors, but there are floral, fav floral flavors there. Try saying that five times fast. And the thing is, it's 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 good, but it's not impressive. It's it's, an, it's a good effort, but it's not a great effort. It's, it's one of those where I would love to have like a bunch of these if I'm playing beer pong or anything, but it's not one of those ones that I'm really gonna enjoy. It's just one of those, just take it down, take it down, take it down. It's good, but it's not great, bottom line. All right, guys, so the next on the menu is a hop beast. It's literally called the hop dumpster. Now this Imperial Double IPA weighs in at 9%. From what I hear, this thing is packed with hop flavors. Now I'm a huge IPA fan. I'm okay with them adding a lot of hops. The real question is, is do they do it in a way that tastes delicious? Let's find out. Mmm. 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 Now this beer has so many different varieties of hop flavors in it. You can literally taste several different flavors simultaneously. I couldn't put my finger on one of them if you asked me, but they're all there. Now, it's got a really strong malty body, so it definitely helps balance it out. The hops is still predominant. You can tell this is a 9%er. But at the same time, this beer, the actual flavor in itself, the hops, the ones that they actually decided to throw in here are great complements to one another. I would definitely drink this beer again. I just wish it wasn't 9%. <laughs> All right, guys, my next beer up is the Citizen. It's a Cali Common, 6.5%, 45 IBUs. Now, Cali Commons, you're thinking Anchor Steam, stuff like that. That good California beer, good amber color, not as, not as dark as you'd see a red ale, but also not as light as all those IPAs you'd see. So, but we're expecting a little bit of bitterness, so let's check it out. Ooh. Okay, so, it, like any ESB or California Common, you're getting a little bit of those bitter notes, but it's not overwhelming. It's It has a rich, rich body, tasting malty. You can taste a little, ro a little bit of roastedness. That's why you're getting that color from, and it's almost absolutely delicious. It, it's like 95% there. It's like, it's an amazing beer. It, it, it's that girl that you saw that you always think, oh my God, that, that's the perfect woman except for blah, blah, blah or that's the perfect guy except blah blah blah. There's that one quality that's like, it's not quite right. I can't put my finger on it for this. It's just, it's, it, it's just so, so minutely off from being completely perfect, but still, it's an amazing beer. It's an amazing thing I wanna take home with me. And who knows, this might well, very well be one of my best beers here. All right, so the next on the menu is called Hoppy Seconds. Now this is a really interesting beer because the story behind it has to do with Hop Dumpster. Basically what they did with Hoppy Seconds is they sparged all the remaining grains in their batch with Hop Dumpster and created this beer. So it's got all the leftover sugars that were left behind. And then on top of that, they basically just blasted it with more hops. What the result is, is a very sessionable IPA weighing in at 4.8%. Let's try it out. So this beer in particular, what I would say, is you can definitely tell there's not a lot of malt body in this. It's extremely light. Makes sense because they literally just squeezed out the last of the remaining sugars out of their batch from Hop Dumpster. Now what I will tell you, 
is that they still threw a lot of hops in here, so it gives it a lot of personality. It's probably not gonna be my favorite session style IPA, uh, but at the same time, it's still a decent beer. This would be for somebody who really enjoys hops and nothing else. They wanna go for that flavor and they don't necessarily need a really high ABV. This particular beer is probably right up their alley because it is totally hop forward. All you're getting is the hop flavor. Someone like that would definitely enjoy this. All right, next up, the Mesa 5. This is the first beer that I saw here and I locked eyes with it and I'm like, is that real? Is that, could that be true? Okay, so what it is exactly, it's a 70% Pilsner and 30% Riesling for you wine drinkers. So it comes in at 7% and 70% Pilsner, 30% Riesling. You, you, I'm kind of intrigued. I'm like, what can this contain? It's light, it's clear, and it looks, looks really intriguing. I can't wait to try this. This is almost unlike anything we've ever tried before, so let's give it a shot. Cheers. Okay, right off the bat, it doesn't taste like 7%. It tastes way, way less. It's one of those sneaky beers. It could walk up behind you and knock you over the head if you're not careful with it. That being said, it's light, it's fruity, and, but it, you, you can tell the wine's in there, and you can tell the Pilsner's there, but it's not like they're clashing. They're, they're holding hands and they're walking along, enjoying each other's company. It's really tasty, but I don't know. It, as much as I'm, I'm surprised by it and I like it, it, it's not one of those where I love it. It's, it, it's great, but it's not wow. It, it, it misses the wow factor. But still, that still being said, knowing that it's 70% Pilsner and 30% Riesling, that, that in itself makes it a wow. So it, it, it's kind of hard to describe this beer, and I still don't know how to describe it. The finish is great, the taste is great, the body's great. It's not, not very fooling on the body. It's a light finish. I, I just don't know how to, dis, to classify it. Is it a great beer? Is it a good beer? Is it an excellent beer? It's just one of those anomalies that we're gonna have to talk about. So I've definitely been on my brown ale kick lately, and today is no different. Today I'm trying a brown ale called Dry Trail. It's a 5% ABV. It's got a beautiful dark color, which tells me it's gonna have some fantastic malty flavors in it. Uh, let, me, let me check the aroma. Mmm, mmm. Nutty, almondy, Oh, the aroma is full of nutty flavors. Now let's try it. Mm. 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 I'll tell you guys, I'm an IPA guy, but to be honest, brown ales are slowly becoming my new favorite beer. This is, this is nothing short of fantastic. Dry Trail is packed with fantastic malts. It's got a great nutty flavor from the aroma to the body to the finish. I mean, the whole way throughout, it's just, it's a basket of delicious flavors. If you're looking for a solid brown ale, this is a way to go. It's light, it's mellow, but it's still got all the good, solid malts, you get your toast, you get your biscuit, you get your caramel, you get your toffee, and then at the same time, you're getting that nut flavor the entire way through. It makes me want to sit here and have another pint of it right now. I'm really sad that right now I'm literally drinking out of this tiny little taster glass, because all I want is a pint of this right now. This is a great beer. All right, next up is the Coulter Rye IPA. It's 7.2%, 65 IBUs, and this is a gold medal winner from 2011 at the San Diego International Beer Competition. So, Rye IPA, obviously, we're looking for some good color, that good gold color for the IPAs, and Rye, a little bit spicy. Let's check it out. Okay, classic West Coast IPA, but the Rye gives it that little extra something. 
you're getting those good hop flavors. It's not overwhelming. A good body, good finish. It's still there, lingers a little bit, and it just gives you still those good hop flavors in the back of your throat. And the aroma, just you're getting a little bit of the hops, but it's not overpowering. It's not like the hop dumpster, or the hop seconds, where it's just all hops. This is just the most balanced beer that we've had here. It's tasty, it's delicious, and it goes across, goes down really well. And for being the Rye IPA, I can see why this won the gold. And to be honest, it's probably one of the most drinkable beers here. All right, guys. So the final beer I'm gonna try here at Cis Montaigne is the Black's Dawn. This dark beast right here weighs in at 8.5%. It's an American Imperial Double Stout. Now, everything that I've heard about this beer, it is packed with coffee flavors. It gets you drunk real fast. It must be something that's really easy to drink. I'm excited to try it. I love me some stouts. Let's find out what it's all about. It's got a lot of body to it. It hits you really hard. There's still some really good coffee flavors, light chocolate, but it's a beast of a beer. It's good, it's good, but I could not imagine drinking several of these. Have you ever gotten a fight with your girlfriend and you yell at her and you get real mad and you guys don't talk to each other for a little while? And then you come back and you have that really good makeup sex. That's what this reminds me of a little bit. It's a little bit angry, but it's extremely pleasurable. <laughs> That's the only way I can describe this beer. <laughs> it's makeup sex beer. <laughs> All right, last up here at Cis Montaigne is the Belgian Double. 8%, 31 IBUs. Love my Belgian doubles, Belgian triples. I'm looking for those good fruity flavors and I can't wait to try this. That good little amber color looks delicious to me. Cheers. Right off the way you're getting those good banana smells. Good apple-y little on the nose but it's more banana than anything which I just can't wait. You can definitely taste the alcohol more on this one than you than I have on some of the other Belgians that we've had on this journey but that doesn't mean it's not a bad beer. You're still getting those great fruity flavors but they're just being masked a little bit more with the alcohol in this one, in my opinion. That, that being said, it's still very, very tasty. You're getting that good finish, a lot of fruity flavors. The smell is absolutely fantastic. The beer goes down easy, even though it's 8%, even though it's a Belgian double and a Belgian triple. It just doesn't go down as easy as probably some of the other ones that we've had. That being said, if I'm here, I'm gonna definitely buy a, a small growler or a big growler with this of uh, this stuff because it's just fantastic. It has me tripping over my words because that's how good it is. All right, Justin. Yes. We've tried quite a few beers today. Let's talk about them. What would you say are like your top choices for some of the best beers that you had? Okay, so the first one off the bat, I have to kind of go with. I I can't kind of have to go with. I have to go with the Mesa Five. You know, it's the 70% Pilsner, the 30% Riesling, the 7% one that I tried. It was just so unique. It, 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 was a, it was a cider wrapped in a beer blanket, like a beer coating. It was, it was really interesting. It's something I've never had before in our travels, and I, I don't know if we'll have another one like it. What I will say about that particular beer is he's right. It's unique. It has a combination of like that Riesling wine flavor. It has the beer, it's a hybrid, and you can definitely, you definitely taste both flavors. But the same token, for me, it definitely falls short. It's got a lot to work on. But that doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. It's still a really good beer. It holds a lot of potential. And guess what? You cannot stay traditional and still be innovative at the same time. You have to venture out, you have to be daring, you have to try new things. That is what that beer was. And although it wasn't my favorite, it was still a great beer. 
All right, Jeff, so the first beer you want to talk about, what is that? So, I would say out of all the beers I tried, I think it's pretty clear if you watch this whole thing. If it's not, it's definitely this Dry Trail Brown Ale. It looks a lot darker now that it's darker outside, but man, this thing is full of just fantastic malts, fantastic nutty flavors. It is just packed with just an intensity and robustness of just goodness. Um, for me, the thing is, is I'm always looking for a beer that says, hey, here I am. I fall in this beer style, but I'm a little bit different. Now this thing's not offering up different flavors. However, its complexity, the amount of flavors that are in here while staying perfectly balanced is mind boggling. To be honest with you, for me, Dry Trail caught me at a great time because I am loving brown ales right now and this is right up my alley. I mean, I don't, I don't know. What, what do you think, Justin? It, it, it's a good beer. I, I, you have a hard on for brown ales right now, sorry to say. He just loves his brown ales. I don't know what it is. It is a great brown ale. Is it the best brown ale we've had in the past couple weeks? No. No. But is it solid? Absolutely. It's, it's a great drinkable beer. And at Cis Montaigne, this brown ale has to be one of the best. It, it's nutty, it's rich, it's delicious. And you know, I can't, I, I can't blame them for reaching for another pint of it. All right guys, that is it for us from Cis Montaigne Brewing Company here in Rancho Santa Margarita. Thanks to everyone at Cis Montaigne for helping us out today. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to our video and let us know down below where you think we should go to next. That's Jeff, I'm Justin, we'll see you next time on Let's Have Some Beer.